Hey folks, welcome out to the backyard today. We're going to do something different for you, as you obviously noticed off the title of the video. I don't know how many people actually cook risotto outside, but we're going to do some risotto for you today with some spinach and parmesan and actually some turnips. Okay, and we'll go through all of that part with you. But risotto is kind of a different thing uh, to be cooked outside, and it's made with Arborio rice, and I hope my country hick slang came out okay on that. Arborio rice comes from northern Italy, and uh, risotto is kind of an old dish, and it's got a lot of traditional older dishes, and in the 1900s or so, risotto kind of got popular, and uh, it took off in many different forms and ways and anything like that, and so we're going to put some risotto on for you today. There's a lot of stuff that kind of goes into this little simple dish, but it's really not simple. If you don't execute some of the things properly, you don't get a good risotto. All right, we're talking about the arborio rice. You can kind of see these do not actually look like a regular rice. It's a different type of rice. It really absorbs a lot of liquid. It absorbs a lot of flavors that you cook with, with stuff like that. It's, it uh, originally came, this dish came from northern Italy. And this particular dish that we're cooking with spinach and parmesan has parsnips in it. And if you don't have parsnips, you can use turnips like we are today, or you can use white carrots or something similar like that. Okay, a lot of risotto is cooked in a stainless steel skillet or a pot. Uh, we're going to do it in a Dutch oven. And yeah, we're going to cook rice. There's going to be some liquids in there. If you're going to do it in cast iron, there's a couple of things you need to remember. Have really, really good seasoning. This dish can be hard on your seasoning, folks. And the other thing is, cast doesn't cool down quickly. Like we've talked before, residual heat. So when you're cooking rice or something like that, you have to be mindful of your heat. We've got some pretty good coals going on here. We're going to get our 12-inch Dutch oven without any legs on it on that grill. And to that, we're going to add a whole couple of tablespoons of olive oil. We're going to let that get hot. And we're going to be doing some prep work for you uh, as, so that then we can assemble the whole dish. One of the things that uh, is a garnish on this dish is shaved turnips. We got these by using a potato peeler and pulling it along the turnip. And it uh, gives us these little thin shavings. These are kind of going to be, we're going to crisp these up. It's just a garnish on the dish. This does the same thing if you do it with uh, parsnips or white carrot, some things like that. Risotto has a many, many options. This dish is just one that we chose to cook for you today. All right, folks, we're letting that get a little warm. We want our olive oil to be a little warm in there because we do want these garnish of this turnip to crisp up and get brown. And it's kind of in a roundabout way, it's going to kind of resemble bacon. The look to it is going to be that way. Sometimes turnip gets really, really dark. But uh, turnip is another one of those dishes that when you cook it, depending on how you cook it, to me, it has a little bit different flavor, similar to the way a radish does when you cook a radish. All right, folks, we're going to take these turnip shavings, and we're kind of going to, just going to put them in this Dutch oven a little bit. They're already frying up. I don't know if you can hear that or not. We'll get a spoon. This isn't going to take very long. Folks, you can see we've got these shavings in here. They're starting to fry up, and they're getting a little brown on the edges. But uh, you want to make sure they don't burn, but we want to get them good and crispy because, like I say, this is going to be a garnish on top of our dish. This is just part of our prep work. Okay, folks, you can see we got these radishes. Some of these are a little darker than we wanted. You can, they're not radishes. They're turnips. Sorry, folks. We got these all up. This is just going to be a garnish. We're just going to set these aside to cool. So the same pot, we're going to add another tablespoon or so of olive oil. And uh, what we're going to do to our spinach, again, I'm going to use a fancy word for an old country hick. This is chiffonade is how we did this spinach. All we want to do is get this spinach in here really quick. And you can hear it hit that oil really fast. All we really want to do with that spinach is help draw the water out. We don't want to add a bunch of extra moisture into our uh, risotto. 
So we want to kind of just hit this just a little bit, wilt it lightly. And that's about all it's going to need. And I grabbed the wrong thing. We're going to use a strainer because what are we going to do? We're going to try to push that moisture that's left in this spinach out. And all we're doing is we have the spinach in the strainer and we're just using the wooden spoon. Once you get this, hey guys, if you're doing this in your kitchen on your kitchen floor, uh, I don't think that's going to be good. In my outside kitchen, uh, that's why I like cooking outside. I can kind of do what I need out here. We don't have a whole lot. This is just to help flavor our risotto. All right, folks, we got our Dutch oven pulled off the fire to make sure we don't get it too, too hot. To that, we want to add one yellow onion, fairly finely chopped. And we just want to saute this a little bit to get it soft ahead of uh, the rest of our stuff. And um, we want to thank y'all, as we always do, for uh, watching over us and looking out for our videos and all the things that you do. And uh, we appreciate it very kindly. And uh, it means a lot to us. Now, this is a one-pot dish. So if we have a little bit of stuff left over inside the dish, and if you wonder why I'm moving, folks, the wind's whipping around a little couple of different ways. And I get a mouthful of smoke every once in a while. Okay, folks, these onions are about three quarters of the way done, and we're going to add three cloves of crushed garlic in there. Uh, we didn't want to put our garlic in at the same time because nothing's worse than burnt garlic, folks. We're going to get this tossed up a little bit. Let it go just a minute or two. It's not going to take real long. I don't, uh, I don't know if I'm on uh, medium, high, high, low. I have no idea what my setting is now i like to take the rice and other people do it i've kind of researched around and brown the rice just a tad before you make your risotto we got one cook one cook listen to me one cook cup I'm hung up on that one cup of this arborio rice we're just going to toss it around in here for a minute or two and then we're going to put some water in here all right, folks, we pulled the Dutch oven off the heat. I did the rice until I started smelling a slight nuttiness. Not really to where I saw a discoloration of the rice, but where I saw a slight nuttiness, and I pulled it off and put it over here. Now, we're going to use turnip instead of parsnips. We In here, we have one cup of grated turnip, okay? We want to put that in our pot. And I use my hands a lot, folks. I'm just cooking for me here. I'm out doing something for somebody else. I have a, I use utensils or gloves or something. Try to. Now to this, we're going to add three and a half cups of water. Another reason we have our Dutch oven off, I want it to come down where it's not screaming when I go to pour this water in. We're going to give that a little stir. And we're going to put it back on the fire. Now, this is going to cook for probably between 10 to 15 minutes. We want all this water to get absorbed in this rice. And uh, we can't take any water out. If we have to, we think we need to, we'll add a little more water to it. But we want our rice to be a little al dente as we go about it. So we're going to stick this on here real quick. And if y'all remember the other day, I was telling y'all in one of the videos, I have a tent, I put my Dutch oven close this way. If I put it in the back, I'm reaching over the fire and it gets hot on your hands. I mean, I cook outside a lot. And a lot of times it don't bother me, but if you're not used to it, you know, it's just something you need to be mindful of. Now, we're not going to talk to you the whole 15 minutes as cooks. Folks, if you're doing this in your house, you want to bring this up to a good boil, and then you want to reduce it to a simmer for, oh, I don't know, 10 minutes, maybe 12 minutes or so, whatever it needs to absorb the liquid. Well, as we were talking earlier, I don't have a simmer knob, so, and I'm in cast. So, one, I want to stir this fairly often because I'm in the cast. The second thing is I'm going to have to pull it off the heat 
to kind of get my simmer. So I'm going to be going on and off the heat as needed to control that. Where in your house, you can turn that knob and go from a good boil to a simmer and you don't have to worry about it. I typically do not cover my rice when I'm doing risotto. A lot of people cover rice when they make just rice. Let's talk a little bit about temperature control. I'm stirring this and we got a liquid in here so we don't need to rotate the oven because we can rotate the food inside the oven. But you see how I'm stirring this right now. And as soon as I stop, you see how that returns to a boil? Okay, that's telling me I'm getting fairly hot for a delicate dish such as this. So what I'm going to end up having to do is pull this off for just a minute or two. Let the heat kind of moderate. And then I'll put it back on. But that's how I gauge it. Whenever I stop and it comes right back, I know I'm pretty hot, folks. Folks, you can tell we're getting a little thicker. And the thicker it gets, the more often you want to stir it, especially if you're outside. Um, it's going to have the consistency of a thick oatmeal. That's kind of probably not the best way to describe it, but that's, what's going to, that's what it's going to be like. You can kind of see our rice has swelled up a little bit. A lot of our water starting to come out. We had a pretty good boil right there. So I got to be careful we don't scorch this. We did add a little salt and pepper to this as we were cooking just a little while ago. Probably, oh, about a half a teaspoon each. And you can see some little bits of spinach and some other stuff in there because it's a one pot dish. So some of the stuff that we prepped in this dish before, not only, you know, we did that so we would retain all the flavors within all the liquids that we kept in the pot. All right, folks, we got this risotto pretty much taken care of on the hot fire. You can kind of see what we look like right here. Still got some moisture to it because risotto needs to be kind of silky and smooth. And our rice is just a little al dente. Now to this, we're going to add a half a cup of Parmesan cheese shredded. About a teaspoon of sage. And we're going to add two tablespoons of mascarpone cheese. All right, we're getting all this blended together in here, stirring it pretty good. And the other thing we want to add is that little bit of spinach that we did. Now, again, you can put as much spinach as you want in there. Uh, and uh, you're welcome to do it, however. But be sure you drain that spinach like I did earlier. Uh, we, don't wanna, we don't want this to be runnable, soupy, and runny, okay? All right, we're going to get a little bit of this plated up for you here. We've got our bowl, so I don't know if it's technically plated or bowling, but we're doing it either way. You see, we've got some stringy cheese. I'm going to get a good bit of this in here. Now, this is what I made right here, and the measurements that you're going to get really going to be for two people. Uh, it's about all it's going to be for. Uh, and for us, that's just fine. All right, folks, we're going to take the little bit of these turnip chips that we did. I'm just kind of going to put that in the middle. Now, if you like your risotto a little more creamy, you can certainly do that. But uh, this is pretty good to me, just the way it is right now. You can see the cheese stringing out of there. Looky there. wonder how hot this is going to be. Mm -mm -mm. All right, everybody, we got this risotto done. Typically, it's one of the things I like to do is taking dishes that you typically get or you cook in your kitchen. I like to bring them out to the outdoors and cook them without anything modern. I mean, uh, I kind of get used to my high and low knob. I get used to my pots and pans. And the more you cook outside, the more comfortable you get with doing things. You start cooking a lot outside, you'll start pushing the envelope. Things simply as barbecue and hamburgers and ribs. Those get easy to you, and you're looking for a bigger challenge or a way to impress your friends and family. So, folks, we just want to say a heartfelt thank you again for coming to see us, messaging us, watching us. And uh, we've had some growth in our YouTube, and we're just thrilled. We're just happy to have some fans, and uh, it's just uh, a way of telling us that there is a few of y'all out there that like what we're doing. So, risotto on the barbecue pit. You got to try something new. Enjoy your food, folks.